Hello everyone. In this episode, I want to give you some tips on how you can illuminate your characters when they're inside an interior scene into which the HDR image might not reach into. This is actually inspired by a question I got from one of my Patreon supporters, Angeli. Angeli, I hope this is useful. She says, hey, I'm having great fun with Das Studio. I'm using large sets like a cave set or, you know, kind of f uh, fantasy sets and they all look good to up to a point but when I use characters inside them like inside a cave they're so dark I can't really see their eyes and their expressions and you know outside if I don't have a set they look okay if I load them into the scene they look fine but as soon as they're inside a set it's just really difficult to see them and that is true and that is of course because the, much like in the real world if you imagine that the large sphere onto which the HDR image is projected that reaches onto basically a flat plane but as soon as you block the light with a room or something it doesn't quite work that way so it is exactly like in the real world really let me give you an example of that with the Iron Man 13 theater set that you know from my live streams from the intro of my live streams this is what it looks like I'll give myself a little bit more room here this is it and this is the filament preview actually i'll go and make myself a little bit of a wider camera here just so that we can see that um, this is the outside let me show you this in iray this is using the default hdri that comes with that studio the ruins thing the one that you know it's kind of okay but you probably want to replace that with something so totally default lighting this is what it looks like on the outside and now if i go and move my camera into the set through the mist of <laughs> of the of the iRay engine trying to render here we are that's the foyer of the theater just go position my camera somewhere whoops uh, somewhere kind of here that is probably somewhat easier with with filament but yeah so now we're on the inside of the set oh this this might this might work yeah, this might work that's cool so we're now on the inside here and there's still you know a good amount of light which is which is nice which is nice but it's because this is a nice set and we have a nice creator that provided some interior lighting for us so for once the little posters here they illuminate and of course we seem to have lights around here and if this was a real movie theater this is probably what it looked like so up here in the scene tab i can see that under movie theater i have a bunch of lights and these are point lights and some other uh, light sources here if i were to go and switch them all off watch what happens so i'll hit control and click the little eyeball icon that basically switches everything off underneath it and this is pretty much what i would imagine angeli what you're seeing in in your cave sets it's pitch black if i were to bring in a character here the hdr from from outside the the ibl doesn't really come into effect because all the walls block it out it's much like in this room here there's no window in this room so the sun outside doesn't reach in it's as, as easy as that we still have some lights namely up here and we also have slightly illuminated posters so this is kind of our starting point and hey where do we go from here how do we make this happen essentially you have two options you can either provide your own light objects those can be either geometry that you bring in or you can bring in point lights or spotlights or you can use existing geometry and turn that into light emissive surfaces so let me start with that approach before we go on to the next part in which we're going to have a look at you know making characters look handsome in a setting like this so if you were to say hey if i didn't have these lights imagine you bought a set and you, it wasn't by iron man and <laughs> there aren't any lights in here and you think hmm that's a that's a shame how am i gonna what am i gonna do now these things here these white things they are technically the geometry for where in real life light sources would be much like up here and the same trick has been used here this is a surface here and if you use your surface selection tool you can go and select those so it's either that or shift m or you head over to tools surface selection if you use that and you can hover over the items in your scene and things will flash up that are defined as a surface and any of these things can be turned into emissive surfaces so that they emit light that they become lamps essentially so if you hover over these little things they're all grouped together which is nice it's all the same thing if i go and select that and then head over to my surfaces tab then i can see that it's called 
light i13 MOV wall mid and the emission color so in the emission channel here is currently nothing. It's currently black. So if you set this to something other than black, it will start emitting light. And it's a bit difficult to get used to these parameters here, but if you just pick white for now, and select OK, then you'll see that other options become available. And you also see that the, this now looks like something is, you know, emitting light here. It's not enough to reach the floor, but you can see that, you know, something is lighting up here, which is great. All we need to do now is figure out the correct parameters for that. That's a little bit down to experimentation and, you know, trying things out. So what I usually do is I alt click the luminance slider here so that that is on its base value of 1500. Then I tend to change the luminance units here to watts because I, that is that speaks to me more than candles per square meters or whatnot. I don't really know what that is. So I'll, I'll go put that in and then I change the watt value down here. So it's not actually watts, I guess it's, I don't know, lumen per watt or whatever. But if I go and change that to something like, I don't know, 500, then I can see that there's more light that comes out of here. It doesn't really matter which of these values you adjust or what number you put in. Just if you know this number is too low for the effect I want, you just make the number higher. So let's try 5,000 instead see what happens oh there we go concession stand or whatever there would be now is now much more illuminated so that's one approach that you can use and then you can also if you um if you zoom out and whoops that was too much out here if you if you think well that's the light temperature now isn't uh, isn't quite matching the ambiance of the theater you could also go and turn the emission temperature to something lower so like something like 4000 that would make the light a bit yellower 6500 the default value is kind of what we see outside it's kind of what the bluish sunlight looks like on midday but if you make it lower it goes more orange so yes that is one way of doing that so if you put a character in here now they'd be much better illuminated than they were before they still probably wouldn't look amazing so you might still see slight shadows under the eyes but this kind of emulates the scene that you would get if you were to snap a picture with your mobile phone of someone who's in this situation because you wouldn't necessarily get a flashlight out or get good lights out or whatever but you certainly can't see their face and their expression so that's one way of doing it if you have an interior set that supports it so not all sets uh, are good enough that they have surfaces that could be turned into emissives but if you had something like you know a magician holding a crystal ball you could select the crystal ball and turn that into an emissive and that would give everyone a nice glow on their face even in a flashy color so you could do that that's kind of nice to do that i have a feeling iron man didn't use this on these top lights here because this doesn't look as nice as the point lights did and we're going to talk about point lights next because that's just you know that's another option that you have if you want to turn these things back off just switch the color of the emissive to black and that'll get rid of all the other options and now we don't have these things anymore if i now go bring my other lights back i have a feeling this this is just a nicer result uh, from you know looking at the metal or let the ceiling here i think it's just you know a much nicer result let's talk about the point lights next and for that i'm going to go and start myself a brand new scene only because uh, that makes it easier for me to show you how how this works i'm going to go and emulate the effect we have inside a cave for example if i go over to my render settings under environment you can also go to the environment options in your scene tab and then head over to the parameters tab the idea is the same i'm going to go to the environment map here or no actually the environment intensity and switch that to zero because when i do that it means that we don't have any effect of the hdri in this scene right now so what i'm rendering is probably going to be hopefully going to be entirely black let's bring in a character any character will do perhaps gale by 3d universe as soon as she loads she is completely black and that's kind of what we want so we don't really see anything because we don't have any lights in our scene now so if we were to render her in iray we wouldn't actually see anything it's kind of you know let's use this to our advantage and uh, give us some clothing as well okay gale's dress perfect so I'm going to go and 
look at Gail kind of from the side here and if I wanted to make her show up in my scene I can now go ahead and create myself a point light. There's various, so these are these are light objects that Das Studio provide here. Point light, there's also a spotlight, there's also distant light but I'll show you a little trick and this is why I prefer the point light. It can be turned into literally all the other things that we may want to use. So bring that in. You have two options. You can either apply the default settings, which means it'll arrive at the very center of the scene. That is like literally been between Gail's feet right here. Or you can use apply active viewport transforms perspective view. And that means it'll be spawned at the position where your kind of virtual perspective view camera is. This is nice if you're far away from the center of your scene. If it's easy to move something there, that's, you know, that's nice. But if you wanted to, if you're like, you know, quite a ways away and you wanted to have the light object kind of here closer to where you are, I'd use this one. And if you do that, it appears that, you know, where is it? Well, if we move away, there it is right in front of us. So if I move away with my perspective view, I know that's exactly there. So just move away and, um, and there it is. So I would have probably preferred it really closer to Gale, but I can just move that over. Control F will frame this currently selected object so that it's better for you to position it. And I'm going to go and put that kind of in chest height, fairly close to her. Well, and also in front of her. That's where these viewports that the, the orthographic viewports kind of help with that, with the placement. If I go really close to her face, you can see that the that even in the filament viewport, it does have an effect here. So I can see a little bit of her face now. So it just shows me that the that the lamp or the, the, the point light itself is working. It's just not strong enough. And, you know, I don't want it to have it that close to her face anyway. So I'm going to put it kind of here, kind of in front of her. It's a little fiddly to get it going. And then, of course, I need to get the value right. So uh, again, I'm going to go into iRay so that we see this in the iRay viewport. And I can see a little bit of light. It's just not quite strong enough. So what we'll do then to adjust that is go to the parameters tab with the point light selected. You can also use the lights tab if you're using that. Head over to the light, literally the light properties here. And have a look at well, all the all the funky options here. One of them at the bottom is the luminous flux in lumen. That is usually the number that I adjust. So there's also an intensity slider here. If you crank that up, the light will get brighter, as you see. But I would leave that for later. So Alt click on that slider to leave it kind of in, in its current position and get the bulk right and maybe make fine adjustments with that. So I only tend to adjust this slider here. Default 1500 isn't quite strong enough. So I'm going to say let's try 10,000. So these values are very different from when you set up emissive surfaces. They're very different. So 10,000 isn't quite strong enough either. Maybe I'm going to go 50,000. Let's try that. Well, that might be a little bit too much. Was it 50,000? Was it 50 million? Let's, let me try 20,000. There, 20,000. That's kind of we're getting there. We're getting there. So let's leave it like this. And, you know, we can see that there's lights coming out and it's it doesn't look great, but, you know, it's, it'll, it'll be good to get us started. So the funky thing about a point light is that it's light that's emitted from a single pixel in all directions. And a single pixel's surface area is fairly small. If we were to turn this into a different geometry, like here under light geometry, if we turn the point light into something else, like a disk, the disk is a plane, well, it's like a round circle plane that emits light. So technically it's a mesh light. If we do that, we can see that the light gets um, slightly, slightly less strong, but we can also see that we now see this little disk here. And that is technically a mesh light that emits this light into into her face here. And again, it's it's it doesn't look great, but we're we're going to make vast amounts of adjustments so that you can see um, you know how this works. The cool thing about leaving this in place, you don't want this for rendering, but the cool thing about leaving this in place for now is that we can see the shape change. So if you go and change the disk into a rectangle, then you can see that the disk has now turned into a square that emits light. 
that's also kind of cool. So this is where the light comes from. It's technically an emissive surface. It is a mesh light under the hood. And you know, this is how this how that works in, in iRay. You can change the size, like height and width of this thing, no matter what that is, if it's a rectangle or a disc. And in fact, if we do that, if we make that 50 by 50, you can see what happens to the object that emits the light. And you can also see what happens to the light quality that you see on your person. So even though it has the same light emission strength, the surface is now larger, therefore the shadows get softer and the light intensity overall on the person seems to be uh, less, less harsh. So this is much more complementary to maybe what you want to do. Obviously, we don't really want that in our scene. We don't want a massive square in her face. So we can go and switch this option off here. That is render the emitter. If we go and turn that off, you will see that the square itself will disappear, but the light that it creates is still there. So that's that's really nice. I'm going to go and switch that back on just because it's a nice visual uh, reference as we go and make a little change perhaps in filament because that's that's kind of nicer for me to uh, to navigate so it's almost like it's almost similar to what we see uh, but it's 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 certainly nicer than the the texture shaded view here let me go and make a copy of gail if i go and select gail and turn her into a second character that's basically opposite her because you may have a group of characters that have a dialogue or whatnot let me go select gail head over to edit and then i can either say duplicate node hierarchies that'll make a full copy of her or i can go and create a node instance of gale that'll be a bit more memory effective it'll just create a kind of a shadow copy of her which is much larger than the original gale and that is because i think the, the character is sized down a little bit so i'm just going to go and switch her worker walk her over here and then go and maybe a Y rotate her by 180 degrees. And I think I'm also going to go and scale her down to about 80%. So we have two, two of almost of kind of exactly the same character. If I go and put that character opposite the other character in filament, it appears to be okay. But if I go and switch this back to eye ray, I can see that only one of my characters is now illuminated and not the other one. So that's, that's not really, that's not really great. So what I can do now is switch this back to my point light. And if I wanted to use the, the kind of the, um, what's it called here? The, the square or the rectangle light geometry, what I can do is switch on two sided. And that'll now mean that both sides of the plane illuminate. And that means both characters get some light, which is, you know, kind of cool. It's exactly what I want. I can still move around with the light. I can still change the light intensity, but now both characters are illuminated. And if I were to go and switch off render the emitter, then, you know, that square is gone, but both characters would be illuminated. And that's kind of cool. So now if you have something like a campfire here in between them, for example, you could use this trick and literally let the campfire illuminate some orange light and that'll, that'll make a very natural effect. Not that you'd be dressed like that in a cave, but you know, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, you get the drift. Let me show you something else. If we go back to Gale, and I'll go back to filament because it's just much easier to, to move around there. If I go and make another copy of Gale and make her the third character, I'll do that with the node instance as well. Uh, there she is. This is, uh, this is also slightly too big. So first of all, you're going to be 80%. Excellent. And then the other thing is I'm going to go and move you over here as the third character. We're going to move, we're going to rotate you around the Y axis, something like that. And that is actually easier to type in, 90, perfect. Now we have three characters gathered around the light source. So if I go and switch that back to iRay, then we'll see that we, that we still have the first and the second character illuminated, but the third character is now not well illuminated. Quite the opposite. She's still in the shadow and you know, that's just, that's just bizarre. What's going on there? Well, it's because the, light is in fact a plane that is being emitted and the plane only emits light in two directions to the front and to the back but not to the top or to the bottom unlike a point light would do or maybe unlike a three-dimensional 
light object would do. So you can see this ugly kind of shadow here and that's just because that's the, the thin line on which we don't see any light. And just as a reminder, if you go and s switch on the emitter, you can see why that is. This is, the, this is the shape of our light source and yeah, of course it doesn't emit anything here. But if you were to change the light geometry back to something else, like from a rectangle to either back to a point, that gives you that harsh light again. So now all three characters are illuminated. Or you change this to something like a sphere, then you can see that uh, this is now going to give everyone a better, better lighting experience. And maybe I'm going to go and take these two gales slightly further out from the middle. And I might go and increase the the light here a little bit maybe to 50,000. Is that 50,000 or is that 5 million? Yeah there we go that's perfect. So now they're all kind of evenly illuminate, illuminated and I can still deselect the emitter if I wanted to not see that in the middle and you know but we can certainly see them. If they were inside a room and the room is dark and we don't have the luxury of a HDRI then you know this is a way that you can make your characters come to life. So this is now no longer a point light. So don't take it too much by its name, even though it says point light, it doesn't actually mean that it'll remain a point light forever. That's just how it started out. So you might want to rename that object into something like group light um, so that you can that you can remember what you did there. One final thing that I could show you is the instead of a sphere, I could you could show you could use a cylinder, and the cylinder if you switch that on, it might look crazy, but that's only because when you uh, look at the cylinder, it would probably be more suitable for a cylinder that's that's uh, rotated by uh, ninety degrees on one of the axes. Uh, that's probably best done under here. Yeah, like say 90 or minus 90, so that the cylinder is kind of like this in the middle. That'll also be a nice light effect, especially if you don't show the emitter. There we go. So yeah, that is how you can light up your characters. If you wanted to do the same thing with meshes that you bring in, you can follow the procedure that I've outlined in the beginning, in which you then bring in a primitive or any other object and then select its surface or the surface that you want to illuminate and then fiddle with the surface properties. And that is kind of, that's what's called a mesh light. I hope you find that useful. I hope, Angeli, this gives you a little bit of a tip of how you illuminate characters in interior sets. This is really only scratching the surface of uh, how to do lighting. I mean, that's the much bigger topic, isn't it? How to do photographic lighting, because even though you can see their faces, they don't look great. So you might want to put a light source even behind them to make them separate from the background. That's it's a little bit like the colored light that I've got going on. Some people have these um, lights that shine directly at the head from behind, so you don't see them in the shot, but you see some kind of separation between the background and the character. So that's important. Or you can illuminate the background a little bit with another light source experimentation is key. I hope this got you started. If you have any questions, then please do let me know. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.